Hi, my name is Drake Driscoll, and I'm the Executive Director and Co-Founder of the Vision Collective. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on World Refugee Day for a benefit concert in support of Buffalo Stringworks. BSW is an organization in Buffalo, New York that delivers world-class music education to diverse youth that inspires personal and community transformation. For those of you who do not yet know the Vision Collective, our mission is to form meaningful relationships with and among refugees and new Americans by sharing and exchanging music between diverse communities. We are so excited to be back together again in person with some new faces after over a year. We are grateful to be taking a turn in regards to COVID-19 and masking and social distancing guidelines. And we are thankful that a majority of tonight's performers are fully vaccinated, allowing for some completely unmasked performances. We are crossing our fingers that we continue to take steps towards our new normal in the coming months. And we look forward to seeing many of your smiling faces in person again soon. Tonight, we are presenting a program of works by refugee and immigrant composers. The Vision Collective is coming to you live from St. John's in the Village in New York City and Tbilisi, Georgia. We are also excited to be joined by Renovari Music, a Cleveland-based nonprofit dedicated to bridging divided communities and creating restorative experiences through music, stories, and conversations. Hi, my name is Rebecca Schausberger, and I am the founder and director of Renovari Music. Through our teaching and our performing with Renovari, we hope to bring hope and healing through music to people here in our community. Drake and I met this past year as part of the Global Leaders Program and have spent this entire second semester working with Buffalo Stringworks for our fieldwork activities. As this semester comes to a close here in June, we thought there was no better way to celebrate the many hours we have spent with Buffalo Stringworks and support their wonderful work than with a benefit concert. A huge thank you to Rebecca and Renovari Music for joining us. As a reminder, all proceeds from tonight's event will go to Buffalo Stringworks. You'll have the opportunity to hear more about BSW in our intermission conversation with their executive director, Yuki Numata Resnick. For now, let's get to some music, starting with Schoenberg's Quartet No. 0 in D major. Arnold Schoenberg was born in 1874 into a Jewish family in Austria and is widely considered as one of the most influential composers of the 20th century. Um, as a Jewish composer, uh, Schoenberg was targeted by the Nazi party and his works were labeled as degenerate music and forbade from being published. In 1933, being warned of the rise of Nazi Germany, Schoenberg immigrated to America with his family. Uh, he lived in Los Angeles. He taught uh, at USC and UCLA, and he actually ended up purchasing a home uh, across the street from Shirley Temple. So uh, American composer George Gershwin also lived in the neighborhood and they became tennis partners. So Schoenberg is often most known for uh, his innovations in atonality and for developing the 12-tone technique. On the other hand, his string quartet in D major composed in 1897 that Rubin, uh, Ramon, and Sterling and I will be performing is far from those innovations and reflective of his earlier style. Um, his earlier style, he said, was most influenced by Mozart, Beethoven, Brahms, and Dvorak. I hope you enjoy. <laughs>
Hello everybody, my name is Sofiko Simsive and I'm coming to you from Tbilisi, Georgia. I will be playing for you a piece by Bela Bartok. In 1940, as the war broke out, Bartok's anti-fascist political views led him to flee Hungary and immigrate to the United States. In 1945, shortly before his death, he became an American citizen. The piece I will be playing for you is called with drums and pipes from his set Out of Doors. As you can tell from its title, this piece is a perfect representation of Bartok's treatment of piano as a percussive instrument. I hope you enjoy. This piece we're about to perform for you is called Zagan Tango, and it is by the Japanese composer Hirono Border. Hirono came to the United States as part of her musical studies. She is a violinist in addition to being a composer. And this piece combines sounds from the Argentine tango along with the Brazilian choro. So we have a whole mix of cultures with Hirono's Japanese background, the Argentine tango, and that Brazilian choro. We're performing for you today from Cleveland, Ohio, myself, Rebecca Schausberger on cello, and my colleague, Lelia Mangioni on violin. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you again to all of our listeners for tuning in tonight. We appreciate you taking the time out of your Sunday evening to be with us. Rebecca and I are happy to be joined now by Yuki Namata Resnick, Buffalo Stringworks Executive Director, and Snow, a BSW student. Hi, Yuki and Snow. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> We'd like to take just this moment here at intermission to hear from the two of you and let our listeners know a little bit more about Buffalo Stringworks. Sure. Um, thanks so much for having us. And, you know, Buffalo Stringworks has been a part of my life for the last seven years. I'm one of three co-founders. And, and I guess what we had always hoped for our Buffalo Stringworks students is to give our families, well, give our students a sense of community and a sense of family through music. Like if I think back to when I was Snow's age and Snow's grown into ninth grade next year, when I think back, you know, and I was a young violinist at that time and school wasn't always the most comfortable place for me, but I always looked forward to going to my after school music program. And I remember it was something that I wrote in my, my like journal every week, like, oh, Friday, that's the day that I have orchestra or you know, that's the day of my lesson. And those were things that meant so much to me and, and were like that grounding force. So that's my hope that that's what we can do for our students. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it'd be so great to hear from Snow because that's my hope, but I don't know, you know, how that actually gets experienced by our students. Well, it's a great idea. Let's turn it over to Snow. Snow, what's something that you love about Buffalo Stringworks or what's something that is different in your life because of Buffalo Stringworks? I got to meet new people that I never thought that I would. And like, it helped me release my stress when like, I'm really anxious and stuff. And uh, I don't really have anything else. That's <laughs> great, that's great. I'm so glad that Buffalo Stringworks has been able to be part of your life, Snow. That's terrific. Yeah, and Snow, I'm wondering, is there anything you're looking forward to next year when Buffalo Stringworks is hopefully back in person and off Zoom? I'm looking forward to like the in-person orchestras and like new songs we could do like all together and not just like section it out. I'm also looking forward to see my friends. I bet that's a great part of BSW, right? The community, yeah, that's awesome. And I guess we'll go back to you, Yuki. <laughs> um, so we can read all about your wonderful programs on the Buffalo Stringworks website, but I'm wondering, um, you tapped into this a little bit, but why is it important that Buffalo Stringworks exists? You know, we exist in a city, Buffalo, New York, that is incredibly diverse and so vibrant, and yet it's extremely segregated. And there's not a lot of compassion or understanding across our cities. And, um, you know, this might be surprising for a lot of people to know, but Buffalo has actually become, you know, a prime um, spot for resettlement for refugees and immigrants who are searching for a new beginning. Um, and so I think what Buffalo Stringworks does, but through our music is help to bring people together. You know, the schools aren't able to prioritize the arts during the school day. You know, I spoke with some music teachers in the public schools, especially during COVID, some of them were really only able to see their students 15 minutes every six school days. So we all know that music can change people's lives, that it can help with academics, it can help our students make friends, it can help with the social aspect. But if you're only getting music 15 minutes every six school days, like it's not going to do that thing for you. So that's why Buffalo Shingworks exists. And we really hope that we can be that bridge for families who may not have gotten to know each other. Like, like Snow said, she got to make new friends. And we hope that that's what we can be for our families. So Yuki, our audience is about to hear They Would Only Walk by Mary Kuyumjian, um, commissioned by Buffalo Stringworks. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about the inspiration behind this piece and its commissioning? I'm really excited for all of you to hear They Would Only Walk. Um, the inspiration is really our families. It's our students and our parents and 
their journeys. Many of them have traveled hundreds of miles um, across the globe to end up here in Buffalo. And so as I got to know parents, just like, you know, Snow's mom is actually one of the featured speakers on the video. You know, she had told me about her own personal journey from Burma to Buffalo. And I just felt like it was so important for the world to hear all of our parents and students' stories. Um, so this, you know, we worked with Mary and she has, is a musical documentarian. And so what she does is she actually interviews people and listens and hears their stories. And then she stitches them together into one long audio track and then writes music to be played kind of in accompaniment, but also in tandem, like they're meant to be equal. And so the way that we did it was, you know, Mary interviewed a number of students and parents, and then we had 70 students perform this piece of music. And we also had the professional musicians of the Buffalo Chamber Players. So even in that musical way, it was a way for us to work with professional musicians that we wouldn't have normally had that opportunity to do. Um, so you'll notice that this is definitely all recorded during COVID. Everybody's wearing masks. And we, we brought 70 students into the building, but in groups of 10. So it was like a 12 hour recording process over a weekend to like painstakingly bring everybody in. But it was important to us to make sure that we had every single student present, that you can hear them, but you can also see them as well. Amazing. So excited to see this. And thank you, Yuki, and thank you, Snow, for being with us here in our intermission. And to all of you who are at home watching, we're just so excited that you're able to tune in tonight, and we hope that you'll consider supporting VSW so they can continue doing this wonderful work that they're doing. You can find the donate link in the video description and in the live chat as well if you're watching on YouTube. Now we will hear BSW students and Buffalo Chamber players perform They Would Only Walk. I am 12 years old and I was born here at Sisters Hospital. I was born in Venezuela. I'm originally from Burma. I was born in Didim. That is the name of the town. It is in Burma. 13, I was born in Eritrea. I'm 12. I was born at Morocco. I was born in Malaysia, and I'm 11 years old. I was born in I was born in Thai Yai. Shan State. It's Shan State country of Burma. When I was young, my grandparents and my moms, they have to wake up early in the morning about five and six. They will go to the farm and they'll be farming the whole day. Uh, they have to carry the firewood because we don't have electric, so we use firewood. My grandmother used to make ice creams and stuff, so we, she had like um, the coolers. So she would put, like after we got out of school, she would like fill up the cooler and whatnot, and then we have to go walk blocks to sell them. When I was in Burma, because um, there's a lot of difficulty in Burma for education, for the food. When I was two years old, my village was burned by the, the government. ตอนมาจากประเทศพม่ามาเด็ดประเทศไทยใหญ่เพราะในประเทศไทยใหญ่นั้นน่ะมันมีการที่ท่านพม่าเขาคงมีรังกีชาวบ้านไม่มีสล
that's when we had to flee our village, run away. They will kill us. <laughs> that's the reason we have to go to the refugee camp in Thailand. When we live in the refugee camp? In the camp, you know, uh, most of the schools, it is like a hut. They have an education, but they give uh, for every month, uh, like a rice, oil, and um, other stuff. But they are not allowing you to go outside. Rice and oil, like salt, designates. We use chapels to cook, so they will supply everything. And once a month, the people, they have the household, okay, how many houses, in one house, how many people, they have a kind of census. Every rainy season, because the water drop in the hole, so we have to put, cover with uh, any like a plastic bag. They just have roof and they don't have wall, it like, it's like open. And the roof is covered with kind of like leaves uh, so that it wouldn't leak. It was slippery and full of mud and very slippery. You know, you can uh, fall down anytime. I don't see people using like crayons and color pencils. They have like only books, pencil, uh, pen, that's all. We can go back to our country because they have a civil war. That's why and the UN decision for descendant for the refugee people to apply in, to come to other country. Oh, they came to the camp and um, they call all the people that if they want to come to the US, uh, they give you information. They ตอนอยู่ประเทศไทยเขาถามต่อไปเลยตอนอยู่ประเทศไทยอ่ะชาวชาติเขาถามอ่ะคํา 3 ข้ออยากใจไป When I moved to Thailand and the United Nations asked me three questions you would like to stay in Thailand, then you would like to go back to your old country, or you can go to other country. I was five, and then what I remember was like, when we got out of the house, when we were walking through the forest, it was dark, and then it was like a river, so many waters, we had to go through them. And then that's when we got through the water, there was, there was like these people from different countries, they're like soldiers. Bus to the to Bangkok to the airport six hours. Bangkok to Korea six hours. Korea to New York the sixty hours. To Buffalo I don't know how many days it take. I didn't eat anything. So I was born in Morocco, and then my my mom literally took me to my dad because he was in America. So we just came right here uh, when I was like just like a little baby, like not even a month old. And then my mom and I went to Canada and my sister, and then we had to go back to Morocco, and then now I'm in America. They were getting all of us together. I was saying bye to all my friends that I grew up with. Literally, we first, it was really hard. You're moving when you're 15. We have the quinceañera, so that was like a one big thing for me, was waiting for that day. But then, no, we had to move this, like, two weeks before my birthday. We couldn't do nothing for my birthday, and it was like always, like, the puffy dress and all the friends and the dance. I miss that because we had to move here. It was always pink or blue or purple. They would only walk at night because during the day border patrol was over there. So during the day they would hide. I remember one time he told me of how he was walking and he was hiding from the border patrol. 
Then at night when they were walking, they finished their last like tug of water. So they went over there where the cows would drink and they picked up the water from there and they started drinking that. And then in the morning when they tried to drink the water, there was like worms and everything in it. So they had to grab their t-shirt and put it over for like as a filter for the water. I didn't know what to think after that because I was like so speechless that my dad would do something like that in order to come to this country over here. If I stay in the camp, my kids or me, we never know how to speak English. We never have a car. We never have a good education like this. That's why I, I, we decision that to live a old life and I came to here to start a new life. I feel like, um, yes, I have to leave my old stuff, my old place to get ready for a new life. Came to Buffalo and we never moved, so we just stay here till the first day that we arrived here, till today. And we are not planning to move, you know. It's like our home. God had planned for everybody. He said he want to be a professional violin. So hopefully, if he works really hard, he can become where he wants to be. So I really hope that they can be a volunteer and share what they have learned with the next generations. That is my hope. I remember I went to Mexico, like all these children were being sick and everything, and so I feel so bad for them. And eventually I want to save enough money to go over there and to treat some children. I do want to help people, especially when, when they're sick and like they're new and like they're still babies. Go. I just want to hope they are good people and nice people and good for their future life. One day they will become a musician. I think music makes people happy. And it's like a kind of like healing. Because there's a bond to it. To make your families together. Hello everyone, my name is Milad Yusufi. I am pianist, composer, visual artist, and also artistic advisor of Vision Collective. Rescue Me is commissioned by Vision Collective. It's a three movement piece. In this piece, I wanted to express my feeling as a refugee and also it's inspired by current events in Afghanistan and also uh, this pandemic in, in, in the world. It's three movement piece and, and each movement has a different character which I wanted to dedicate to one particular uh, accident that happened back in my back home and also larger picture in this world. So this piece is going to be performed by uh, Drake, Hannah, Ramon and Irfan and I hope you enjoy.
Thank you all so much for coming to our virtual benefit concert in support of Buffalo String Works. We encourage you to visit our website, Renovare's website, or BSW's website if you would like more information. I would like to thank Aaron Valme for his wonderful audio recording work, the team at St. John's in the Village for allowing us to use this beautiful space, and my wonderful co-founders, Sarah Sung and Timothy Chewy, who unfortunately could not join us tonight, but played a huge role in bringing this event to life. We know that the past 16 months have been incredibly difficult, but we ask that if you have the means to do so, you please consider making a donation to Buffalo String Works in support of the wonderful work that they do. You can find the donate link in the video description and in the live chat if you're watching on YouTube. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you again soon.